So this is where God led me on this walk, this beautiful Friday morning. I needed to share something. How high are you willing to climb to get closer to God's voice? Because I really truly climbed up this rock. I started to make a video from the bottom, but I don't have enough storage so it wouldn't let me get it all in. But God's calling us deeper with him. He called me the other day and I needed to share this. Right on top of this rock, I, cr I was wailing. I was crying out to him and he was whispering for me to follow and listen for his voice. Now, he called me so up high that I could reach closer to him. You see the opening in the trees? You see the sky? Now, I was able to hear him better because I, I cried out for help and it didn't really seem like he was answering at first. And I felt this like block of being able to hear his voice. And I, I, I tell you how frustrating it was. He called me up this high and began to explain things to me. Then I began to hear his voice because I left the outside distractions at least on hold and leaned on him. You gotta lean on him in all seasons and this is where he led me. You can't tell me this isn't beautiful. I mean, this is like majestic and amazing. I had no idea because there was this other secret place that I go that I, I talk to him in the vicinity. But if you look, there's a running babbling brook down there. And if you listen, you can hear the symphony of the birds. You can see the wind, which is the air in our lungs. You can hear the sounds of the babbling brook. There's a secret place God is inviting you to sit with him and just begin to pour out and talk to him. Literally how we speak with each other. Talk to him and share with him what you're going through. He's going to take you from dark to dazzling. You just got to bear with the process because what we, we fail to understand is many times we keep running to our sin and it's pulling us away from him the more we do it. And you don't want to be separated from God because he is filled with so much love. He has so endless love to offer and there's nothing you've done that is not going to, you know, cause him, that's going to cause him to separate his love from you. He wants to work with you. He wants to help work it out for you, but he can't if you don't give him your tears. Satan takes a bad situation and he makes it worse. He's the one who made the situation bad to begin with and, and caused so many times in our lives, people who fall into addiction were afflicted by being victimized or traumatized from something that happened to them. And it, it changes, it changes us. We're not the same. And what we also need to realize is anything can happen at any time suddenly, so suddenly that you don't even know what direction it came from or how you're gonna get through it. Well, God is always providing a way. He's providing a way, you know, for you to get out of it. We got to stop dancing with the idea of sin. We have to know what our biggest weakness is and, and stay guarded against it because that's the thing that, that Satan loves to use against us the most. Now, when people are going through something, you know, I came up here for peace. But I notice, I'm going to show you something. God says keep a sober mind because the devil, our adversary, is on the prowl seeking to whom he may devour. Look at this. As I climbed to the top of the rock, I noticed. Now, I used to drink this. I believe it's Heineken. 
but that's the cap to the alcohol bottle. <clears throat> Some people drink so much they don't even realize they're ingesting Satan's brew. That's, that's a pentagram. And obviously whoever was drinking, you know, sat here, decided to make a fire, drinking, probably drowning out sorrows, but so upset with their situation that, look at that, they carved into the rock with an upside down cross, the same that you see on that cap. The devil is a liar. And I'm telling you, I rebuke that. I, I rebuke that and I, I pray to God to pour his blessing on this rock because Christ is the rock upon we, which we stand. He is the strength and God called me so close to him. I didn't hear him in the spot I was sitting in because he wanted me to run and go even further and deeper with him. And I'm gonna come down to this water We're gonna go through things. We're gonna go through pain and tears and suffering, but you cannot let Satan convince you that there's something wrong with your tears. I've cried out from the depth of my soul in agony at times. And it was so hard for me to grasp that God was with me and was gonna take me through the process I was going through but he really is it's hard to hear his voice and when you've been drinking you're re you're really not hearing his voice because especially if you're intoxicated now you now you've taken toxins toxic things into your body that is just not meant for you and you're not thinking clear at all you can't even hear god as well and, and he's crying out to you at this point, but you're numbing your pain by letting Satan tell you to drown in your sorrows instead of finding a place to just sit with God and become more like him. You want to become more like him. Look, he creates stuff like this. There's beauty, believe it or not, there's beauty in your broken. If you would just take every piece and give it to the master who can make it a masterpiece. You gotta give them every piece. You gotta stop whatever's hindering you and causing you to hold on even tighter to the things that's disturbing your peace. Yes, there's awful things in this world. Satan is the ruler of this world. He's destroying God's beautiful world, his earth that he made. And this isn't about us. It's about the fact that God is love and Satan just wants to just extinguish the fire of love inside of us. We're, we're, born, we bo we're born into this world and we begin to cry. That's our first breath of air is a cry. Now, would you tell a newborn baby, do not cry? So I'm you would comfort the baby. That's what the Father does for us. We cry because now we've been separated from that safe, secure place. And we're in this world. And yes, the journey can be painful and lonely at times, but you're never alone. I can promise you that. You cry out to God and he catches every single tear that falls from your eyes. They're not, your tears are not a waste. They don't fall on empty, dead ground. He catches them. He keeps track of our sorrows. He's calling you to just cry out to him. If you were willing to cry out to sin and run to sin, now you realize it's a lie. It's, it was a lie. It was a lie from the enemy because he took a bad situation and made it worse. When you're drinking, you're gonna make poor decisions. And that's when a lot of crime and hurt happens, hateful stuff because the pain turns into bitter and rage and other things that are not of God. You don't wanna go through that. 
you do want to give it to him and let him work it out for you as quickly as it happens. Otherwise, it's just going to build up over time and it's going to corrode. And it's going to cause so much backup damage in you. Yes, it's normal. We cry. And it's also normal. We want love. That's, that's gonna, I, I honestly believe that's going to be a never-ending hunger until our last natural breath on earth. That's why we cry when we come into the world because we were separated from love, from the protection of the heavenly realm surrounded in his love. But believe me, he was very pleased when he created you and he had a great plan for you. And he is faithful and just. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be holy because it is for your protection and it's refreshing. I probably should have left the Bible here. I left a Bible in a different spot. But I think I might have something extra in my purse. I'm going to leave for... Yeah, I'm going to... I don't know. I don't know where it came. Somebody is going to need this. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, you please just place your blessing. Place your blessing on whoever did this. I'm praying for this person right now. I'm praying for those in agony and who are suffering and sitting in darkness and have hardened their hearts, God. I'm praying for their hearts of stone that you begin to give them a new heart of flesh. We have to pour out, pour out to Jesus. If you are willing to run for your sin, then run to God. Run to God who can rep repair anything, who can heal you and comfort you. He, Jesus is a wonderful counselor. Yes, I wore my Jesus shirt today because it's in my pants that say, let's see if I can get <laughs> slay. Because you know what? The battle is real. And I'm slaying demons out here. And there's times Satan just trips me out from under my feet and knocks me down. And it is an element of surprise. But I... Touch not my anointed one, says God. Speak, Father, your faithful servant is listening. I hunger for him. And this is why we go through this world craving love and attention and compliments and just things that make us feel good. And that's what God is. That's why we're crying out for love. You're gonna go your whole entire natural life with, there's always gonna be an emptiness that only God can fill and God is love. And Satan hates God. Satan is hate. So you, you make a choice in this life. Even despite the bad things that happen, God's always going to remain good. And I know there's going to be times where you feel like he doesn't hear you, but it's because he's waiting to see how far are you willing to go to find him again? Because he never left you, but you wandered so far. It's taking a little bit longer. Maybe you've been suffering for a very long time. And if you read the Bible, it talks about long suffering. And it also talks about fruit of the spirit. And it talks about you. It talks about your situation that you're in right now and what you're going through. And though you feel like you're bad and you made a lot of bad choices in your life and you wandered too far and you don't have any faith, there's gonna be times where you just have but a speck. 
Give it to God. I promise you, if you keep him in the center of all things, no matter how bad it feels right now, it's going to pass. It doesn't last forever. It's not forever. God is eternal. God is forever. And so is hell. And, and you know, make your choice. God doesn't force himself on us. His love is always evident. But if you've been drinking or you've fallen into some sort of addiction or you've hardened your heart due to circumstances in life, I really strongly encourage you to go from the dark into God's dazzle. Let him amaze you. Be bewildered when he calls you into times such as this, into the wilderness, because he really just wants you to walk away from everything that is causing you turmoil and to come back to him. Reconcile, you are gonna cry out for love all your life. Loved ones are gonna die. And hopefully, if they planted good seeds along their journey following Christ, who is the only way to heaven, we follow in their legacy. And yeah, it's painful and it hurts, but you know, everybody cries. Your loved ones that left you, they cried. And God caught all their tears too. And he, he keeps track of our sorrows. He really does. He keeps track of our sorrows. And wow. He keeps track of our sorrows and he catches all of our tears. I promise you, it's never for nothing. And there's nothing wrong with crying. That's what Satan wants you to think because you're crying over what he did to you. You gotta get mad at him and you gotta tell him to leave you alone. You really gotta grab him by his horns and just scream in his face and tell him to leave you the hell alone. And you begin to grab a hold of God's hand of help and let him pull you up. And you claw your way out of the pits of hell you're in right now. You're suffering, you're in agony. This is carried on for too long. Eventually you're gonna say enough and you're gonna wanna fight back the good fight. Do, do all things out of the goodness of your heart and in love because God is love, because you want love. Don't treat people how people treat you. Treat people how God treats you. Sometimes God's not gonna change your circumstances because he's waiting for you to change your mind or change your heart. But I promise you he is faithful and he will come to you in your time of need. Yeah, I'm pretty lost, God. So I'm going by faith right now. <laughs> He's gonna come to you in your time of need. You just have to ha let him work on you. Get out of your own way and let him work on you. And, and be willing to just lay it all down at the altar, right at the foot of the cross. Even if you're not in front of a cross, just visualize one in your mind and say, bam, this is where I'm leaving it. All my problems, all my worries, all my desires, I'm leaving it here. And then you pick up that cross and you use Jesus' strength now. Now you realize you can't do this in your own strength because he is the lamp at your feet. He, he came to be the light of the world. You understand? You're not alone. Sometimes you need to get alone with God and let him change your circumstances today. Just trust in that, believe in that because it's gonna work. It's all gonna work out for your own good. I promise you with the breath of God in me, I promise you, he's gonna help you. There's help, he is everywhere. You just gotta look for him. You see, I don't know who was here before, but they left this. So 
They also left this. This is what I'm talking about. Do you understand? That's Satan. Like you're straight willing to ingest Satan. I wonder why you're walking around feeling like you're hating. He's messing you up. Enough already. I don't care how addicted you are. I don't care what you're on or what you've done because one sin birthed to another sin. Stop dancing with the devil and expecting different results. Nothing good is gonna come out of it. You gotta trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Let's see. Lord, lead me to a word right now that the listener needs to hear. I pray this is for you. And I pray it changes you today. We're in Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Where, whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is deep. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. So I... It's going to cut me off, but I really encourage somebody to just let God's healing hand touch you right now and change you from the inside out. Change your course, your direction, your circumstances, and cry out to him and bear with him in the middle of your storm. It hurts. It's painful at times. But then there's victory afterwards, and I'm telling you, you're going to have a new song in your mouth. You're going to go from crying wells of agony to crying praise unto the Lord. And you're going to want to save people just as I am right now. He has saved me. Every time I call out to him. Sometimes, though, it seems like he's not going to and you've been suffering a long time. But he's working it out for you. He's already got, he's already got you. You just got to trust in him more than you trusting in anything else. God bless you.